Who was the richest man in history, Mansa Musa, and how much money would he be worth today? Today's billionaires are nothing compared to the late king of the Mali Empire, who possessed incomprehensible wealth. Every few years, a different tech giant appears to hold the record for being the richest person on Earth. Despite their wealth, Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos won't even come close to being the richest person ever. That title goes to Mansa Musa, a West African ruler from the 14th century, whose wealth, founded on gold, salt, and land, greatly surpassed many of the names you know today. Mansa Musa, the West African king who ruled in the 14th century, was so wealthy that his donations could destroy the economy of an entire nation. Could we tell the same of today's richest people? Maybe, but Mansa Musa's wealth was by far superior to theirs. Imagine how much money the all-time richest man would have. Add a few hundred billion now, and you're probably getting close to the amount of wealth that Mansa Musa owned in the 14th century. It's virtually impossible to grasp the full extent of Musa's wealth and influence from the frantic nature of contemporary descriptions of his fortune. Mansa Musa, the fabled king of the enormous West African Empire of Mali, commanded one of the largest caravans to ever cross the Sahara. Musa traveled to Mecca in 1324 for the holy pilgrimage known as the Hajj, together with 8,000 quarters, 12,000 servants, and 100 camel loads of pure gold. Mansa Musa was born in 1280 into a royal family. The empire was ruled by his brother, Mansa Abu Bakr, until he abdicated in 1312 to embark on an expedition. Shihab al-Umari, a historian from Syria who lived in the 14th century, claimed that Abu Bakr had an obsession with the Atlantic Ocean and what was beyond it. Reportedly, he set off on an expedition with a fleet of 2,000 ships, thousands of people, including slaves. They floated away and disappeared forever. Some people, including the late American historian Ivan van Sertima, considered the possibility that he made it to South America. However, there's no proof of this. In any case, Mansa Musa inherited the kingdom he left behind, who was already known for his generosity and devotion to his faith. The kingdom was already rich at that time, but Mansa Musa brought Mali to even more wealth. Under his rule, the kingdom of Mali grew rapidly and annexed 24 cities, including Timbuktu. The kingdom spanned 2,000 miles from the Atlantic Ocean all the way to modern-day Niger and included parts of modern-day Senegal, Mauritania, Mali, Burkina Faso, Gambia, Guinea, and the Ivory Coast. He was said to have never lost a battle, and many nations joined the Mali Empire voluntarily because of the improved standard of living. The Mali Empire was one of the largest empires in West Africa. The culture of West Africa today has been greatly influenced by the expansion of its language, laws, and practices. Great resources like salt and gold were all available because of the area's size. According to the British Museum, the empire of Mali was responsible for over half of the gold in the Old World during Mansa Musa's rule. Gold was a highly sought-after commodity and a significant sign of rank and wealth at the period. And the king owned everything. According to some historians, his wealth would be equivalent to $400 billion in today's dollars after accounting for inflation. Musa's efforts to increase trade in the area helped the kingdom continue to grow wonderfully while he was on the throne. His riches grew much more as a result of trading elephant ivory and substantial gold and salt resources. Despite having so much riches under his control, the Mali Empire was not well known. This changed when devoted Muslim Mansa Musa made the decision to travel to Mecca between the years of 1324 and 1325 across the Sahara Desert and Egypt, which is now known as the most extravagant pilgrimage in human history. A caravan of 60,000 men reportedly departed Mali with the king. The ruler took his entire royal court and officials, troops, entertainers, merchants, camel drivers, 12,000 slaves, and a large train of goats and lambs for nourishment on the road. It was more like a city was crossing the desert, more than a caravan. A city with people dressed in the best Persian silk and gold brocade. Even the slaves were dressed in these riches. Each camel was carrying hundreds of pounds of pure gold, and there were a hundred of them. Once the caravan arrived in Cairo, they could truly display their wealth, and the king would spend his money, or in this case gold, generously in the city. He spent so much gold that it caused the local economy to become unstable and triggered widespread inflation for 10 years after he left. 
Imagine how much money the all-time richest man Mansa Musa, the fabled king of the enormous West African Empire of Mali, would have. This portrayal of the richest king in history gave rise to a sort of global fantasy for people all over the world. At that time, the plague, civil wars, and economic downturn were wreaking havoc on several European nations. So, what did Mansa Musa do with all his money besides handing out gold to strangers? Musa set out to revitalize the cities in his kingdom after his return. His reputation grew stronger as a result of the architectural innovations he introduced to the area. He collaborated with Islamic scholars, including direct descendants of the Prophet Muhammad, and compensated them with up to 200 kilograms of gold for their work, which in today's money would be $8.2 million. Along with helping Timbuktu become a center for culture and education, he also established schools, libraries, and mosques in his entire kingdom. Many of these old structures, including the mosques and the schools, are still intact today. Many Muslim academics, poets, and artists came to Mansa Musa's empire during his lifetime as a result of his support for Islamic education in Mali. Timbuktu, where they gathered, swiftly rose to prominence as one of the most important towns in the Islamic world. Timbuktu also became kind of an African El Dorado, and people went there from all over the world just to catch a glimpse of its glory. Due in large part to the achievements of Mansa Musa 500 years earlier, in the 19th century, it still held a legendary position as a lost city of gold at the edge of the earth, serving as a beacon for both European fortune seekers and explorers. Mansa Musa's current net worth has been estimated to be between 400 and 500 billion US dollars, if he would live today. Although it can be difficult to correctly assess a fortune built on gold, salt, and land, but most historians concur that he was richer than anyone could describe in terms of riches. Musa ultimately held the throne of the Mali Empire for roughly 20 years. He significantly expanded the area, covered by his trading ports during that time, rising to become one of the most powerful kings of his time. It's believed that tales of his enormous convoy and generosity continue to be passed on long after his death. Mansa Musa's sons took over the empire after his death in 1337 at the age of 57, but they were unable to keep it together. As a result of the smaller states breaking off, the empire collapsed. The last step in the empire's downfall was the arrival of Europeans in the region. Mansa Musa will be remembered, not only for his mountains of gold, but also for his kindness and dedication to his Islamic faith, support for education, and funding of his empire's most significant cultural advancements.